Hi, thank you for joining me today. We're reading through A Course in Miracles, the main text. And today we're going to be reading from chapter 20, which is the vision of holiness, and section five, the heralds of eternity. In this world, God's son comes closest to himself in a holy relationship. There he begins to find the certainty his father has in him. And there he finds his function of restoring his father's laws to what was held outside them and finding what was lost. Only in time can anything be lost and never lost forever. So do the parts of God's son gradually join in time and with each joining is the end of time brought nearer. Each miracle of joining is a mighty herald of eternity. No one who has a single purpose unified and sure can be afraid. No one who shares his purpose with him cannot be one with him. Each herald of eternity sings of the end of sin and fear. Each speaks in time of what is far beyond it. Two voices raised together call to the hearts of everyone to let them beat as one. And in that single heartbeat is the unity of love proclaimed and given welcome. Peace to your holy relationship, which has the power to hold the unity of God together. No, sorry, the unity of the Son of God together. You give to one another for everyone, and in your gift is everyone made glad. Forget not who has given you the gifts you give, and through your not forgetting this will you remember who gave the gifts of him to give to you. It is impossible to overestimate your brother's value. Only the ego does this, but all it means is that it wants the other for itself and therefore values him too little. What is inestimable clearly cannot be evaluated. Do you recognize the fear that rises from the meaningless attempt to judge what lies so far beyond your judgment you cannot even see it? Judge not what is invisible to you or you will never see it, but wait in patience for its coming. It will be given you to see your brother's worth when all you want for him is peace. And what you want for him, you will receive. How can you estimate the worth of him who offers peace to you? What would you want except his offering? His worth has been established by his father, and you will recognize it as you receive his father's gifts through him. What is in him will shine so brightly in your grateful vision that you will merely love him and be glad. You will not think to judge him for who would see the face of Christ and yet insist that judgment still has meaning. For this insistence is of those who do not see. Vision or judgment is your choice, but never both of these. Your, body, your brother's body is as little use to you as it is to him. When it is used only as the Holy Spirit teaches, it has no function. For minds need not the body to communicate. The sight that sees the body has no use which serves the purpose of a holy relationship. And while you look upon your brother thus, the means and ends have not been brought in line. Why should it take so many holy instants to let this be accomplished when one would do? There is but one, the little breath of eternity that runs through time like golden light is all the same, nothing before it, nothing afterwards. You look upon each holy instant as a different point in time. It never changes. All that it will ever all that it ever held or will ever hold is here now. The past takes nothing from it and the future will add no more. Here then is everything. Here is the loveliness of your relationship, which means an end in perfect harmony already. Here is the perfect faith that you will one day offer to your brother 
already offered to you. And here is the limitless forgiveness you will each give each other already given, the face of Christ you will yet look upon already seen. Can you evaluate the giver of a gift like this? Would you exchange this gift for any other? This gift returns the laws of God to your remembrance, and merely by remembering them, the laws that held you prisoner to pain and death must be forgotten. There is no gift your body, your brother's body offers you. The veil that hides the gift hides him as well. He is the gift, and yet he knows it not. No more do you. And yet have faith that he who sees the gift in both of you will offer and receive it for you both. And through his vision, you will see it. And through his understanding, recognize it and love it as your own. Be comforted and feel the Holy Spirit watching over you in love and perfect confidence in what he sees. He knows the Son of God and shares his Father's certainty. The universe rests in his gentle hands, in safety and in peace. Let us consider now what he must learn to share his Father's confidence in him. What is he that the creator of the universe should offer it to him and know it rests in safety? He looks upon himself, not as his father knows him, and yet it is impossible. The confidence of God should be misplaced. That's the end of section five. There are some key points here, you know, that there is no such thing as time. And that's one of the major challenges in figuring how to live in this world when we're surrounded by time and yet we keep being taught that there is no such thing as time. So I hope you have a great time with this or great experience with this uh, chapter or section today. And if you need additional assistance or would like it, you can reach out to me 907-351-3003, or you can uh, message me on Facebook or YouTube or SoundCloud, or through my websites, lindalamp.com and lindalamp.shop. Until the next reading, namaste and much love.